Now, of course, being astrophysicists, we don't have to rely on what we see with the human eye. We can actually take spectra of these things. Okay. And here are a bunch of spectra of different types of star. Okay, and these are the names of these stars? Yeah, they've got letter, one letter names. And the letters are not in alphabetical order? Is this just because astronomers like complicated lettering systems? It's all part of an evil ploy to confuse astronomy students, I think. Um, <laughs> it works. Yeah, what astronomers originally did was they took spectra of a bunch of these things and basically saw what sort of absorption lines. Yep. So they might have A stars with one type of line, B stars with another type of absorption line, and so on. Eventually, they realized there was actually a progression in terms of temperature. Ah, so it wasn't what spectral features were there, but the temperature. So we just kept the naming sequence, and even though the names were out of order, we kept the letter. So, so we have O stars, which are the hottest, B, A, F, G, K, and M. Yep. And the normal acronym is O, B, A, fine, girl or guy, kiss me. Okay. Uh, which is something drained. <laughs> a little, it would have been easier if it was A, B, C, D, E, F, G, but that's another story. That would be far too easy. Too easy. Um, so what's happening is this, this is a temperature progression. You can yep. see these ones, their spectrum peaks out in the ultraviolet, which means they're very hot, whereas this one peaks out in the infrared, so it's very cold. So we're really going from that hot, hot stars to the coldest or coolest stars. And as the temperature changes, even if the composition is the same, you're going to see different absorption lines simply because uh, different atoms are going to be at the right temperature to have electrons in certain states so they can cause a particular line. So this is what we looked at earlier when we're looking at spectra of the sun. That's right, so the hotter stars, the O stars, don't have much in the way of absorption lines simply because it's so hot that most of the electrons have been knocked clean out so there's nothing in energy levels to jump up and down. But as soon as we just cool it down a little bit, now we actually stand, start having some of these electron levels. What we tend to see in the A and B stars is dominated by hydrogen absorption. Okay. I mean, hydrogen is by far the most common element in all these stars, but it just so happens that these sort of temperatures hydrogen's at the right sort of state, so electrons are jumping between the level two and three, four, five, which gives the series of lines. But we don't see much of anything else. Yep. Up at the really hot things, it's actually most of the hydrogen's going to be jumping between level one and very high yep. levels, which is it's ultraviolet lines we can't see. Yep. Then as you get a bit cooler down to the F and G stars, now G's is our sun. Okay, so our sun's around here. Yes. We're now, the hydrogen lines are getting much weaker and we're starting to see lines from other elements. In particular, okay. there's this pair of calcium, calcium lines here and then there's magnesium lines and a whole bunch of other lines from other elements. It's not that those elements are present here and not there. There's probably just as much calcium in these stars as in this. It just happens at these lower temperatures. That's just the right energy to be knocking the electrons between the levels which give absorption lines at wavelengths we can see. Now the temperature takes another big drop to the K and especially M stars and their spectra look very, very different from what we've seen. When we're talking down at the M stars, we're starting to see what looks like, I call it like a stegosaurus back, <laughs> They're like sawtooth. Yep. What's happening here is it's now cool enough that you can start getting molecules, not just atoms. So instead of just uh, electron levels between a single atom of a single element, we're actually getting complex atoms. Yeah, and molecules also have energy levels, yep. but they, they, they can vibrate and they can spin and they can produce a whole bunch of different, usually produce bands of absorption rather than particular lines. Okay. What we're actually seeing here is titanium dioxide mostly. So titanium in two oxygens? That's right. And it's the same thing that's used in white paint on Earth. Okay. Um, and titanium dioxide, it's now cool enough that it can hold together in the atmospheres of these stars, whereas in these hotter stars, the titanium will be wrenched away from the oxygen. It's a pretty tough bond. Yep. It can survive. These are 1,600 degrees or something, or even 2,000 degrees. When you're up at 6,000 degrees or 30,000 degrees, it can't survive. Right. So you can look at the spectrum of a star, and even if you don't know the colour, you can get a temperature. Uh, the colour also helps, but between the two, if you measure the colour and the spectrum, you can get a pretty good estimate of how hot the stars are.